everyone and welcome to another episode of Career Australia Season 2 where we talk to industry experts and professionals to get their insights because here we are on a mission to decode and understand the current happenings in the market with regards to opportunities for job seekers and students alike. On today's show, oh my god, as I always say, he is just fantastic. He has flew down to Melbourne all the way from regional Australia to do this episode with us. Thank you so much, Mr. Salal, who's also a migration and career strategist, one of the founders of Asset Migration and uh, Ignite Potential and Not for Profit Organization uh, in Darwin, working for migrants in NT in Northern Territory. Thank you so much. I know you're a very busy person and thank you. As I always say, time is very valuable. Time is money. Thank you for giving your time no for problem. you know answering all our doubts <laughs> and my <laughs> intriguing <laughs> questions. Thank no you problem. so much again. It's a, it's a great opportunity. So thanks to you. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Likewise. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so Mr. Salal, mm. I'm hoping you are doing well and I have a few doubts mm. that uh, I would like to ask representing a lot of students mm. in and around the country mm -hmm. and mm. back home and sure. so many other countries who are watching uh, Career Australia to answer their uh, doubts, okay. right? Sure. Um, so I was doing this basic study before this interview and I came across this really uh, interesting statement that said mm. Australia is one of the major immigration nations in the world, mm. right? And 90% of students mm. who want to pursue their higher education, wanting to come to Australia or any other foreign country, in this case, Australia, 90% mm -hmm. um, of these students migrate to Australia mm. through an educational consultant or an educational agency, right? Yep. And in doing this, in mm. this whole process, what is missed out? Uh, what is um, the factor that they miss out is the research that mm. they have to do for themselves. Absolutely. And how important mm. it is, is what we all miss out to do. When mm. I was an international student wanting to migrate to Australia, I did not have my mm. research done. Mm. I also came through an educational consultant or an agency, mm. right? Um, so tell me about how important is research a factor while migrating to another country like Australia? Yeah. That's a great question. And <laughs> I wanted to say, you know, that's something that every student, any international student who is looking to come to Australia should do. You know, it's right. uh, the reason why I say that is, you know, like, um, you're going to a new country and you wanted to make sure that you know you're getting the best you know because you're not just investing your time but you're also inv investing you know your finance you know there's so many things um, you know or a family invest for on behalf of a student totally yeah so I think uh, the few things you can do uh, is you know one could be about looking at um, you know how whether the course is um, you know something unique you know, unique when I say it's more or less like uh, to give you an example, let's say if someone is coming to a uh, course which is like masters in networking, right? And masters in networking is probably there in, in like, and let's say the student is coming from India, you know, there's plenty of universities in India offering masters in networking. Totally. So, and why do you want to do that? You know, and this could be a question for the for the government as well, why someone is coming, you know, unless they got such specific interest in doing that course. But if the student looks at it from that perspective and see, okay, Master of Data Science, that may not be there in every university, or even if it's there, it may be only in a limited university. So that gives the, you know, the not just the student, but the, when the government looks at the visa process itself, right. you know, it gives them clarity that this student is actually a you know, good student, potential looking, student. yeah, potential student, and they really wanted to uh, benefit out of this course, totally. uh, and they wanted to contribute, you know, to whichever economy they they will be living in. So that clarity on you know what you want to do, do. you know, in terms of the course is one thing uh, you should research because you know today you know it's an information explosion world. Totally. You you get everything out there. It's just about how properly you research. Yeah. You, know, you there is no point in uh, doing too much broad research, you have to narrow it down and bring it to the right. point that you know what that you know focus is key, and sure. how you can do it if you don't think that in the first instance uh, 
you have the right information to do the research right. that's where you can go to places like uh, education expos right go and talk to people because the first hand uh, information you get is actually from people and you know any country you go okay. uh, these days um, yeah. and all the key markets mm. all the universities have got representations there either they may have a marketing um, you know team there right. or they may have people uh, who will visit once in two uh, sorry uh, you know uh, two times in a year right. or something like that and then they attend like so many different education expos totally totally you don't have to make any decisions right you go to those kind of events yeah you talk to people and get information you know see collect everything and then you do your you know your yeah, work totally that's totally. that's one i would say uh, you know everyone should do right second is in terms of the research is you know when uh, student when you come as a student um, you have to have this clarity whether you coming for uh, only to go back to your country or you know whether or, or you have a long term intention or they you know? want to migrate yeah, and settle yeah, in, yeah. in even a though education and migration is seen as two different things by okay. the government for you know for various reasons right as a student you should do your homework mm. you know and what you could do is you can see actually whether these courses are actually on the skill migration list right so and if you do that then you know after your study there is, there is a, still scope for one correct. to settle down that's is correct it? yeah right so three points that i took from what you said sir mm. is um be sure of what course you want to do mm. the second thing is go to expos talk to people talk to people overseas who have migrated to australia yep. Yep. and the third one is proper research yeah, with on on the skill migration list you know like if you can do that yeah. um then actually that helps uh, right. to have that clarity on uh, you know which courses will actually help you to to settle here settle down in yeah. australia yeah. if at all one That's is right. wishing to yeah. right mr sulal there was this really interesting statistics um mm. that i came across the other day while doing research for this particular talk um so it says that the in 2014 mm. there has been a 27% increase in the educational agents sector who work with australian educators mm. and in the same time frame it's very interesting hear me out in the same time frame there has been 35% increase in international enrollments right in wow. 2014 mm -hmm. now while all of this is right there mm. we do not know how many students out of this 35% increase um, in in this whole statistics thing mm. have done their proper research mm. before migrating to australia yep. correct mm -hmm. now help me through the challenges that these students have a chance of facing while migrating to australia okay yeah, yeah. so first of all you've done a thorough research you know so that's <laughs> great great to know those Thank numbers you. i had no idea on those but that's Thank really you. good to know you know the how how many uh, of yeah, enrollment increase yeah. over the last couple of years um, and you know in terms of that uh, responding to your question of uh, how do we support or you know how how people uh, can get more information mm. i think it's more on you know like as like in the when in our last discussion i mentioned you know this is like the age of information information explosion totally. you know you got everything out there mm. so i i don't think yes uh, you know maybe agents work with certain number of universities and they may have you know certain commitments to the universities because they also have long term relationships you know right. so and they they may have no bad intentions it's just that you know they they would suggest okay and and don't say you know like i wouldn't say i know all the details right Definitely. or because how how hard it is to have all the information you can try as much as you can but at the end of the day you know Definitely. we we all need to you know help each other kind of a situation Definitely. so i would say the students should do you know take that responsibility and um, when there is also a, such a huge migrant population in mm. countries like australia yeah i am sure someone should know you know like you must know somebody you know yeah. or one maybe your friend or friend's friend yeah. or your aunt your cousin you know the either a relative or a friend totally. so and that's the kind of people you know you should do the 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 cross check mm. you know so uh, rather than uh, a trust issue i would say 
you right. know like when you when you go to a hospital to see a doctor yeah. and if it's a serious issue what do you do you take a second opinion or you Sorry. take a third <laughs> opinion right? Yeah, right so do this use the same concept you okay. know go to one pl- person you know if the, you're going through that consulting uh, consult consultant or you know education agent mm. that's fine but when once you have the information you can always check with few people and you know even when you search uh, in in social media for example you can see who is in that city you know whether you got any mutual friends or you right. know uh, and then you can reach out to them and right. even if you let's say someone comes across a situation they don't know anyone right totally. uh, one thing uh, mainly i don't think uh, students who are coming from you know many of these countries won't know is how uh, you know australia has got a multicultural system in place for example there are multicultural associations you know there is peak bodies in every state in australia totally so and if you just contact them over the phone or send them an email uh, you know people will respond you know Definitely. not every time but yeah. i i'm sure you can make your ways if you're smart Definitely. you know so that's the kind of um, um, you know approach one yeah. should have rather than just uh, go with one person you know you do you do your fact check you yeah. do you know take second third or five how many opinions you want you know yeah. just take it that way you can uh, reconfirm definitely. what is actually the out there before right. you come definitely definitely i think um, like you said it's not only the responsibility of the educational agents mm. uh, considering that they are definitely not doing this with a certain set yeah. of intentions mm. but it's also the duty and the responsibility of the student mm. wanting to you know pursue yep. a high, higher education yep. or wanting to migrate to yep. australia and settle down yep. to do their um, you know set mm. of research uh, and absolutely and i think one point i missed is and the best part of you know or the best uh, people also to talk to is the the former students Great, great insights into that, uh, to be honest, uh, Mr. Sulal. Well, so the next question is again based on a lot of uh, study and, you know, statistics. So it says that uh, the major immigration target Mm. for Australia are countries like Brazil, Colombia and Nepal, especially in the Australian education sector, Mm -hmm. right? Now, 92% of Brazilian students 89% 89% of Colombian students mm-hmm. and 84% of Nepali students have migrated to Australia through educational agents again. Mm-hmm. Now, again, it takes me uh, back to this whole setup of how much research or how much study that they have done. Mm-hmm. And especially with these countries that are, you know, targeted. Uh, by the Australian educators and universities, we really don't know what is the tie-up like and what yeah. is what is the model looking like, mm, right? Mm. Now tell me, what are the aspects or factors that a student needs to look into mm. before approaching an educational agent or an educational consultant? Uh, given the fact that I understand why students, uh, you know, approach these educational agents and consultants, considering the fact mm. that the whole process becomes easier. Yeah, the yes. enrollment, Absolutely. choosing of an institution, yeah. choosing of, you know, career options mm. and all of this. But again, there are these loopholes that we need to look yeah. into. So yeah. what are the aspects that the students need to look into mm. before approaching these educational consultants? Yeah. Yeah. Again, first of all, thanks for those numbers. Yeah. I, I, I'm just, I'm just being great. encouraged to do more research, research and yeah. study. <laughs> I think that helps because then, you know, it's not just um, um, we talk about one topic, but it also has got, you know, certain facts and figures. Totally. So it's very, very helpful for the listeners. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the main, the key aspect of, you know, when you look for uh, an agent is um, about, you know, if, if they, whether they are the direct agent of a university or a college. Okay. So, you know, in, in, the, in the education system in Australia, as you know, there are two kinds of uh, educational institutions. Right. One is the university level mm. and the other one is like RTOs, the registered training organizations okay. who does set for or, you know, diploma, you know, a certain number of courses. Right. But because some of them, some of that courses also will be, um, you know, uh, is um, 
interesting for international students mm. uh, for example maybe cookery you know or the, the number of those such courses home science yeah home sciences a, a lot of those courses so yeah. um, so when you go to an agent i think the the key aspect is to see you know whether this particular agent is a direct agent with the university or the college okay. because majority you know normally uh, universities have got certain number of um, agents or you know organizations they work with so they don't give everybody uh, their agencies because that lim- that makes it very hard for them to track right okay. so okay. and what happens uh, on the other side is maybe this gets sub agents you know or or gone through different channels so if you can scrutinize that and make sure that if the the particular agency is a direct uh, directly linked with the university normally you get first hand information from them and also you can you know see um, how uh, whether they can connect with the university representatives like i like i mentioned earlier you know there are education conferences and things like that and when agencies who does that who has got the direct links they may bring people from the from those affiliated universities itself so that actually gives you more information mm-hmm. uh, and then helps you know to navigate through any of the challenges you may come across totally totally mm-hmm. fair enough fair mm-hmm. enough uh, but is there a way that you know a student can uh, you know help uh, themselves narrow down this is there a process by any chance or is there a way to do mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. so i think uh, what uh, you can do is because nowadays every one has got any any of uh, you know such organizations have got a website and they actually give uh, all the information about their you know credibility and you know what kind of affiliations they've got what are the universities they are working with you know so if i don't have those directly mm. i i won't be able to do it you know okay. and then you can also see uh, i am not sure whether the university shows it, shows it but you know sometimes uh, you know there are some universities who also says these are our approved agents in countries okay. you know yeah. so you can actually see check those information okay. and and see and unlike i said when you when you go to a con, you know expo kind of you know yeah. there there you can actually see you know because right. they will definitely showcase if they are uh, direct agents because it's a credible uh, you know it, it's about the branding and it's about the credibility they have and they'll definitely showcase it if they have it also guessing that it's a matter of pride for them yeah. that you know they are t- tied up with yeah. this university that has this ranking That's right. in a country like yeah. australia yeah. Yeah. am i right yes yeah. absolutely yeah. and i think the other way of if you are unable to find that information the first instance like you know when you contact someone yeah. the how you can uh, still uh, make a sense of it is by seeing you know who is the the contact point after you know sure. for example when you take it further yeah. you you need to have someone who is working with you right, right. and is it representing the same um, agency which you initially had a conversation with okay. or now it whether the case is transferred to someone else right. you know right. so that actually helps you to see you know whether and you can check the emails like you know right. where it's coming from okay. so small things you can just get clarity there even yeah. if there is some you know red signals you can stop there i think the basics matter a lot in yes. this this case yeah. is yeah. it right yeah. right because it's high sense. it's a volume based you know so huge number of students comes um, so you know there may be a uh, different arrangements between businesses in terms of partnerships Definitely. and so on but um, from a student perspective you know what yeah. i if i am a student what i look at is you know i wanted to get it through someone who is directly uh, linked Yeah. and you know and that and i should get the best benefit for example you know if i'm eligible for a scholarship totally. you know they should be able to support me and get you know to get the scholarship yeah. so that way you know i get the best uh, benefit from them uh, totally. when i am choosing for study um great not to not to point flaws at all yeah. but uh, help me through this at the end of the day it is uh, it is like any other business mm. and students are potential leads Am I right? That's right. Right. Yeah. Great. Great. Right. Makes a lot of sense mm. here. Um so this again comes from a study that I recently did and it says that 75% mm. of uh, educational agents contribute to the Australian educational sector mm. which is a lot. Yes. 75% is not like 
not even like half it's yeah, more than more that than half, yeah. right 25 percent more than half mm. um so tell me what are the kind of services that students need to look into mm. um, while approaching an educational consultant or an agent yeah. or a migration agent mm. if they want to settle in australia yeah I think migration is a different topic, you know, okay. that should, we can talk about it later. Okay, let's not do yeah. migration. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and also I'm not a, a registered migration agent, so I think it's a, it's a, Definitely. Um, a registered person should talk about. Makes sense. Uh, and the other part, you know, what a student uh, should look at is basically, initially, like I said, you know, it's about the, the kind of services they offer, yeah. you know, what is the, like, you know, you never wanted to just, someone tells you that, okay you just go to this university you know yes you know okay this is probably a best university but if you if you you know we we all like choices right we don't totally. want to just go with one choice you want options so Definitely. i would say i would think you know if i am going for a an, an advice from someone i wanted like give me like three different choices you know yeah. from three different uh, cities or you know it could be uh, in a city, in a regional, and give me the benefits, you know, give the pros and cons. cons. Yeah. yeah. So this is the pros, you know, this is regional area, you may get, uh, you know, uh, a job in your field. Uh, or maybe an additional this, year yeah. after your course. Yeah. Yes, correct. Some, you know, when you study in regional Australia, you yeah. can actually get four year post uh, study work visa, so totally. we, which is fantastic. It's like right. six years of visa. Right. So, you know, so that's the, the, the pros and the cons could be, okay, you may not have a city life, you know, you, you might have only heard of Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane, yeah. but then Australia is much bigger than that, you know, totally. so, but you have to decide based on what works best for you, you. right? Totally. And the other part is actually about what kind of support they will give you mm -hmm. after they come here. Okay. You know, so for yeah. example, there are many who does uh, like, uh, you know, they've got, they do their, they, they may have uh, students who came through them earlier. Okay. So they connect the students with the former students. Sweet. That Yeah, because then, you know, you will be getting a lot of uh, front help uh, from, you know, people from possibly from the same country. Same and country and who have been through the same process, same process and have right. had experience. Yes, right? and so you will not waste your time by finding out first, you know, how much, uh, how to get a driver's license, for example, or how to take working with children's card, you know, yeah. how to do a police certificate, totally. because some of the jobs may, ne may need this. Definitely. And also the other thing they can do is, they may also help you to get some part-time jobs. So, you know, the, the, the network, yeah. Uh, when you come yeah. and yes the universities normally do a lot of onboarding process you know totally. they do a lot of induction or like an orientation program to introduce right. but uh, is that enough uh, may not you know yes you can collect all the information from them but if you got the network around yeah. it actually works much more easier you know yeah. you can get a job in one week's time you know you have all these things you as soon as you come you can have everything ready in a week's time Definitely. so it makes a huge difference and then makes yourself comfortable you know yeah. so you because you know there are people there out there who yeah. can help you out it's not only you alone yes. but there are so many out there yes. who are going yeah. through the same thing yeah. the same homesickness yeah. the same not having a part-time yeah. job the same rental issues yes get it totally yeah. totally yeah. so i think that post element support when after you know don't you know don't go with someone who just after you uh, done the process you know the, yeah. they sent you and then there is no connection yeah. rather you know look at uh, which ones has got those kind of post network mm -hmm. you know with the or with the alumni you know or with the former students totally. and that way uh, that connection can happen yeah that network can that grow networking, yes. and becomes a very easier process That's i mean correct. not very easier but yeah. easier, process easier process than yeah. it already yes uh, than how hard it already is right mm -hmm. yeah great Great. So it's um, all about giving that comfort, you know, when you settle in a new country. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, when you come as a skilled migrant versus international student is totally different. Yeah. You know, you, you get a lot of exposure when you come as a student because you're coming into a community. Totally. But imagine how easier that settlement can be made yeah. when you also got a network of people around you. Right, right, right. Great, great insights into this whole uh, you know, avoiding errors discussion <laughs> yes. for students mm. back home. I'm sure it would have been so, so helpful for so many out there considering the points that you mentioned from the basics to doing the research, to attending expos, talking to people back home mm. every and people actually uh, 
you know who have been through the same process has been really really helpful mm. uh, so great value addition thank you so much again thank and thank you. you for your time it really means a lot to us and we can't see you again on another episode considering that uh, you've actually spoken to me as a friend considering that you know being a representative to so many students mm. out there mm. i think thank you so much sir thanks thank a lot you. again thank you sapna very nice talking to you today oh thank you it's my pleasure and thanks from the whole team of empo tv here i'm sure all of this information has been a very significant value addition to sure. people researching about migrating to australia mm. thank you so much so there we go friends you need to do the research you need to talk to people who are migrating with you and people who have already migrated to australia or any other country for that matter you need to get things clear you need to talk to people from institutions and universities you need to do what works best for you and what's feasible for you and your family on that note it's time for me to say bye but i will catch up with you <laughs> on another episode next week with another topic with lots and lots of information and another interesting guest but until then it's time for me to say bye so you take care and i'll see you next week until then this is sapna signing off adios amigos <laughs>